Hi everyone, and welcome to a Gem of a Secret podcast. My name is Donatella My Secrets. My name is Holiday Gem Coco. No, it's not. I know. <laughs> Coco Gem Holiday. Why did I think that would be funny? I even said it and I was like, that's so stupid. <laughs> you know what? It was it was a good try. It was an effort. We, I, they, uh, we can't all be Trixie and Katya. I on know. Her. It's so ridiculous. I kind of want to just start copying some of the stuff that they do because it's so funny. <laughs> but also just give them credit for it because they're super talented and funny. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... So, um, the one thing that I needed to say before we get started with this is buy your tickets for Introvert! Yes! We had a commercial for it on our last episode. Um, I'll put a commercial for it on this episode, too. So, if you're catching this on time when it's released on Thursday, September September 3rd, 3rd, then you'll get to hear it. But if you're listening to this later on, you should be tuning into whatever current Introvert is happening this month, because it's an awesome show that we do every month. From our home, and it's a great digital drag experience for any viewer. Yeah, and then this evening, um, me and Donatella, my secrets, are going to be performing at Drama Camp at Local Lounge at 8 p.m. tonight. We are, we are. It's going to be a great time. Um, but yeah, it's uh, we have a lot of good things coming up. Uh, we have uh, the Milwaukee Porch Fest that we'll yeah, be performing so at, crazy. and that's on September 11th. Mm -hmm. Um, and it'll be really cool. So it's like a social distancing kind of like, it's multiple shows and entertainment that's going on down Milwaukee. And we will be performing on our friend's porch in Milwaukee. And, um, yeah. So check us out. Check out, it'll be me, Coco, and Autumn Rains. Hard. Yeah. And then another thing that we got... We so our sing along went so well last month that the bar owner actually asked us to do another sing along in the month, and that's going to be September twelfth this month. Yes. Yeah, at local lounge at seven o'clock p.m. So yeah. we got a kind of a busy schedule for drag in COVID. We do, we do, um, because we got to make that coin. I w- I've been telling people so much uh, when uh, the quarantine has like been happening, and when the, as the pandemic has progressed, that I I didn't realize how much. Uh, drag really impacted my wallet. Oh gosh, it I'm certainly not, does. I'm like barely scraping by. Yeah, working me too. The way that I'm working, and because drag was, drag was how I helped. I mean, I, I would save money doing drag. I would I I just had more means having that extra money, and it's hard not having that. It's yeah, mine hard. was. Um, so I live a life of luxury. I live a little bit above my means. But I felt very comfortable in my lifestyle because of drag, because drag mm-hmm. paid for all my food. Yeah. Um, drag paid for all my food and my liquor habit. And so without that, um, food and liquor have become almost a luxury. And I know yeah. we need food to survive, but like when I go out to eat, I have to literally make those decisions about what I'm going to order I and know. how much I'm going to have for the rest of the week. Girl, and I'm at the point where like, if I'm really craving it, I will put my Uber Eats on a credit card. Oh, girl, pay it off later. same. <laughs> well, no, because we we didn't we like we're from Grand Junction, Colorado, and the only three restaurants in Uber Eats was McDonald's. Uh-huh. I think was one of them. I think Chili's or Applebee's might have been another, mm-hmm. and then like Denny's. I think that was like the three options you had when I lived there, and that obviously wasn't getting you anywhere. No, so. Just, no, but when you have that option, you got to use it, oh, even if it tea. is coming out of your credit. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Because it's like, you know, like, you don't want to cook every single night. See, this is where everyone listening, this is where some sponsors would be great. You know, if HelloFresh wants to jump in on this, how we're talking about how cooking is such a chore and we don't want to do grocery shopping. Mm-hmm. You know what? <laughs> Then we'll promote. I know, it's so funny. <laughs> we'll promote that. But for now, it's Uber Eats on the credit card because... I don't have any extra money coming in. I don't either. Other than the shows that we just listed. Yeah. Well, the funny, here's the funny thing, too, about, like, I because we listen to, obviously, we listen to podcasts that are a lot more popular than ours. Yeah. And, like, it's so funny to me when they're just like, oh, my gosh, Donna. So, you know, it's so crazy. Right before bed, I was reading my note tick, and, like, which was going to help me get the best night's sleep of my life. Girl, you need to try it. They have 15 different music plays that you can do right oh before you go to Lord. sleep. And it's like, oh, my girl, I'm, like, right out. And like, what colors does the note tick, come in? <laughs> oh, my God. It comes in every color under the rainbow. Hashtag LGBTQ pride. Yes, girl. And if you just go to their website at www. 
<laughs> forward slash a gem of a secret podcast. They'll give you 50% off 50% your first off. month. See yes. how good we just did that? <laughs> Hire us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, gosh. Um, since we're two <laughs> lunatics, um, um, let's absolutely. talk about mental health. Um, <laughs> Great that's, segue. That's the Look focus. how we do segues. <laughs> that's the focus of this episode. Mm-hmm. We're going to be talking about mental wellness, um, mm-hmm. what that means. I, uh, Speaking of when, you know, the pandemic and quarantine and everything kind of started, I started putting much more focus on my mental wellness. I have been going to therapy regularly since the pandemic started yeah i um was so remember right around the time the uh, pandemic started is when we picked this podcast back up Uh because i've always wanted to have a podcast and getting to a podcast with my best friend obviously is a really amazing journey and it's good for my mental health however um I was getting so burnt out on yeah. drag. I was doing drag so much. I didn't know how to say no to a gig. I'll admit it for all the listeners out there who knew me. I didn't really know how to say no. And some of the gigs people told me to say no to were some of the best. And some of the gigs I wanted to say no to really did suck. Um, yeah. So the thing is now it's giving me the opportunity to like really reevaluate. Like we said earlier, how we have that new sing-along happening September 12th. Um, me and Donna actually had a long conversation about it because even though that will give us a standard like three to four gigs a month or whatever, mm-hmm. um, including introvert, which is all online, but that's still a lot of time. Um, it, I like it, I really had to think about it because I got a lot happier right after all the shows were canceled because it gave me the opportunity to take a break, look at myself and my love life and my career and so many things that yeah. I was thinking about and my whole life changed. My yeah. whole life changed because of it. Yeah. I I think I kind of realized, too, that especially with drag, I found out what about drag makes me happy. And it really is the creative aspect of it. It's, it's being able to, without boundaries, express myself mm-hmm. um, and kind of create a look for that evening or, um, you know, a, a performance for that evening that really speaks to me. And I found that um, before the pandemic, uh, I was doing drag as a way to make that extra money. And granted, that was nice. And it was great doing something that I generally enjoy to make money. But um, I found that I was also losing a lot of passion having to um, do the same song and dance every month. And um, not having time really to creatively express myself. Um, I think when you're just out there to entertain and do go through the motions with a song that you've done 5,000 times, it makes it hard to find joy in it. Yeah. I, I don't actually have a passion for sewing anymore. Um, I had a strong passion for sewing. I love creating something with my hands. Um, I also crochet. Um, that's another passion of mine. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I'm in the heart of a sewing project, I love it, but getting started is a journey. It's almost like people who work out, like, they're like, the second I get to the gym, like, I'm fine. Um, mm-hmm. I, that's kind of how I feel about being creative with my drag. Like, I was looking at Sunny's uh, Facebook with their 30 days. 30 days of makeup. 30 day makeup thing. And I yeah. really thought that that might be a good thing for myself to, like, really try to jump into creativity with my drag and learning more. Because, as I said before, right after Camp on Kiki, I moved to Portland and um, I was going through my glow up phase. And I got beat down a lot by some of the things I was trying. And my face became something unrecognizable after mm-hmm. a year living in Portland. And I didn't love that. And so I've gone back to doing more of the face that I had right after Camp Wanakiki, um, so I can continue on that journey. Because that was supposed to be my glow up after somebody gets on one of those shows and then changes their makeup style and gets more creative. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it's a lot different than Donna because she's a lot more creative than I am. Um, I get passion out of other projects and other things with drag versus the creative side. Yeah. Yeah. But I I think that's interesting what you just said um, about how you're, you know, typically for anyone who goes on those types of shows, they go and they get um, a glow up afterward. But the things that you were told in your scene and your new scene kind of affected the way that you painted moving forward. Yes. Um, I think it's really easy for those critical voices to make us do crazy things 
and change things about ourselves and to uh, hide things that you were once maybe pr- passionate or proud of. Mm-hmm. Um, there were, you know, there were some like photos of me that I was like really proud of. And after I got a critique about them, like a harsh critique, granted, uh, one that was done under some inebriation, but a critique nonetheless, it really made me, it affect. It, I kind of got like a sort of dysphoria about the way I looked and I didn't feel happy about some of the looks that I, I once felt really proud of. Right. And it, it cause it can, it, um, it does affect you in different capacities. So one of the things I wrote about on Facebook um, as of yesterday of this filming is, um, so I live with gout. Um, I found out about it three years ago, mm-hmm. and two or three years ago. And anyway, this has been, I've had a gout attack for roughly about seven days at this point, and um, it's not in the pinnacle pain point stages anymore, like I can walk now without a cane, but um, any shoe that touches my foot just massively hurts. And so I had wrote online, because Portland is really a stickler about the package of drag. And so like, I won't be able to wear, I don't even know what kind of shoe I'll be wearing. I might not wear a shoe on mm-hmm. my right foot um, right now for the performance because it just hurts too much. Like it mm-hmm. hurts so very much. Like um, I always describe the gout pain for people who don't understand it. I always said it was like a knife being stabbed into my foot and it's like the like on impact feeling, but it mm-hmm. never pulsates. It never goes away. It's just this consistent feeling of pain. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like at a pain scale eight. Like, it's real rough. And um, and so, like, but I want to do drag. I love drag. And so I need, like, the scene to be kinder. To, mm-hmm. You know, we, people are not always able to have the perfect package. Like, they might not have perfect teeth. Yeah. Um, their body might not be shaped well or whatever in the sense to give that a full illusion or whatever. And that, like, we're talking about mental wellness. And those things really get at me because it can mess up my whole whole evening and drag is such a drag is like three to four minutes on stage right and then if somebody is like oh girl i can't even believe you didn't even try to put on a heel it's gonna make me feel self-conscious and sad and get down on myself well the elitism in drag is enough to screw with your mental health oh it really is because i mean what was it i guess recently i when it comes to like mainstream examples the whole like katya and evie thing how katya wrote in her book how she was just so upset that you know the current winner wasn't bringing her drag up to the level that Katya thought she should have been bringing it. And mm-hmm. that is that is disappointing to me because I, I, feel, I feel like the thing about drag is that we're all these, like, you know, really queer people that are expressing a unique point of view to mm-hmm. the rest of the world. Um, whose business is it if that point of view doesn't suit them in that moment? You know, like, the, who, who cares if that point of view doesn't suit them? Because ultimately what we're doing this for is for ourselves, you know? We're doing this to express something, a side of ourselves that maybe as kids we didn't really ever get to fully express, you know? Feminine sides that we find now are empowering or something that as kids we had to kind of hide from. And um, yeah, I, I think it's just really important to be aware before you go in to critique someone. Yeah, I think so, too. And because the funny thing is, so the whole situation, what, what Katya wrote in her book, was that at the first drag con after EV1, she wore pretty much this T-shirt that, t-shirt said, dress, yeah. that said exp- high fashion or something like exp- yeah. expensive out- or whatever. It was basically just mocking. Expensive outfit, how queens go in and will mm-hmm. spend an arm and a leg. Yeah. Yeah. So um, just to um, break the illusion for all of you listeners out there. Um, when you make it on Drag Race, you usually pretty much take out a small business loan for upwards to $10,000. Mm-hmm. You work with all your friends and hire scenes to tell you who the designers are. You kind of tell them your concepts and you get all your stuff commissioned and it does. It takes like, you know, six to $8,000 to be able to be on Drag Race. And what Evie had talked about was the fact that because she's an oddball, she wanted to wear what she wanted to wear not necessarily wearing all of that other, you know, high fashion garb. And people were really coming after her about it. And obviously by drag con is when it really hit her. Yeah. So that's why she wore that look as a statement. Mm-hmm. And so it was kind of rude of Katya to say that because if you would even have a conversation with Evie about why she chose what she did, it made it would make a lot of sense, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because I do. I do expect a glow up makeup wise. I don't necessarily expect a glow up costume wise when somebody gets on one of those shows. 
Yeah, you know, especially since a lot of the time these costumes, uh, granted, some of the queens may design what they're they're mm -hmm. doing, but a lot of what they have comes from people who may not who have who may have imagined it for them. You know, it may not have even come from their head. So it's really it's really a matter of who has the most money and who's willing to spend the most money. Right. And that's unfortunate because it does in a lot of ways take away the allure of what drag was, you know, the craftiness, right. the, the, you know, like, I, I mean, I don't want to like toot my own horn or anything, but I will get so fucking crafty just to pr produce like a new look, even though I don't have the skill set to like make something really like polished and immaculate. Like, I will go to town with very limited resources and still come out with a decent, different look. And that's what drag taught me to do, was to use limited resources to make something that was your unique, that was your own, you know? And it, it's kind of sad to see how it's turned more so into mm -hmm. who can spend the most money. Indeed. Uh, that reminds me, I forgot to say it because I'm an oddball and I have no liquor. But uh, Donna, how are you doing this evening? I'll let you know after this brief commercial break, Coco. Hey everyone, are you ready for the next digital interactive drag experience? Tune in for Introvert, September 5th at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Headliners will include Ursula Major from season one of the Boule Brothers Dragula and Alexis Bevels, the winner of Camp Wanakiki season one. Also, we'll have Jessica Lahore from the Denver drag scene. Tickets are $5, and you can buy them at www.thecdsdrag.com slash introvert. It's a podcast it with Coco and Donna tell a podcast. Check it out. Tune into what they tell you podcast Check it out. with Coco and Donna tell a podcast. Check it out. I am feeling like not a great expert in what we're going to talk about next because up next on our docket is relationships. <laughs> <laughs> so, cause so the topics today, cause I do want to have like in-depth conversations and yeah. podcasts about these subjects, but we're going to talk about when it comes to your drag, how like relationships can affect your drag. Yeah, and that includes family, friends and lovers. Yes. So, um, we, me and Donna sit on different sides of the spectrum. I've always been in long-term relationships since I've been doing drag. I, was, yeah. I didn't do drag uh, when I was single, really. Um, I did for a little bit um, between my divorce and before uh, me and Adam started dating. But I can tell you that... Because um, I've seen it with my friends, actually. Mm -hmm. Like, they will be dating this new guy and whatever, and they come to the bar, and they're so excited, and they're so happy. And this little fool is always so confused about drag culture because they come in and they are like oh the person i'm dating is a celebrity <laughs> like <laughs> yeah it's, it's daunting it's yeah. daunting for the other person involved mm -hmm. um it takes a very special person to commit and be with a drag queen i think yeah i absolutely agree with that and so let's talk about on, on the drag queen side or the drag artist side mm -hmm. is when you're not in a good split because i can say this when your relationship is not going where you want it to, or even the person that you're dating is treating you like garbage, I mean, even Donna's been broken up with at a show. Yeah, like, <laughs> I've been broken up with at a show. Yeah, I, um, yeah, after a show. <laughs> um, on your birthday when you were in drag. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah lots of those fun moments. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> but, and because it does, it affects how you walk, it affects how you talk, it affects um, your perform like, I didn't want to perform the rest of the show when I brought, got broke up with uh, during a show. Yeah. That was, I remember you being like, no, you need to get out there and perform. And I was like, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, it's not happening. Um, <laughs> no, and it, cause it's healthy. The thing is like, cause there is still endorphins cause it's technically exercise when you perform. Uh -huh. So you do feel a little bit better after you do a number. It sucks though, because if your number goes wrong, it can actually put you in a bad headspace too. You're like, oh, nothing went right. My costume wouldn't come off. I was so exhausted. Ba 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 ba. You know. I'm gonna say something that is, uh, div that's revealing some about myself. And he doesn't listen to this podcast, so I'm gonna say it anyway. Hmm. But the last relationship that I was in really made me second guess on whether or not I wanted to even continue doing drag anymore. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Why? Because it was so out of line and so different from the way that he lived his life. 
it made mm. me feel that since I've never had anything long term and I've only had these series of people who are either intimidated by this life or mm -hmm. it's just not for them once they really get into it, it, it made me realize it's like there's, there's one common thing and that's that I'm this loud local celebrity type of character mm -hmm. and maybe that's just too much for people. Yeah. And it does make you feel like you won't ever find someone. Yeah. Because the thing is, like, I, when I was doing my single phase, and technically when Donna was too, we were some of the most popular drag queens in drag Grand Junction, Colorado. And so when I started dating, um, I didn't talk about my drag, but I also just figured the queer community knew I did drag. I mean, it if they so were... It was so small that, oh, like... Oh, gosh, they would have had to have known. Yeah. I mean, unless they... Well, for me, especially being black, like, they couldn't... Sometimes Donna were like, oh, like, I heard you at a show, mm -hmm. and your voice is matched up for Donna because she transforms. With me, like, I can transform, but because of being black in that place, mm -hmm. people usually figured it out pretty darn quickly. Yeah. And so when I was dating, it was one of those things of where I asked... One of the guys was like, hey, what do you feel about the drag thing? Mm -hmm. And they were like, they're like, I'm more of an introvert. And I don't know if I could like participate in your shows or be in your life in those circumstances. They're like, I support you in doing them. And I might come to a show every once in a while. But like, I don't know how much I can really be involved in the scene. And I was kind of disappointed um, because I was like, well, like... I, I love to have, I, that sounds terrible, but, and, and it probably sounds a little misogynistic too, but I like having my man on my arm when I'm in full geesh. And that's a little bit the bi gender thing, but I like to have my man on my arm in full geesh. And when I'm leaving the gig or, you know, somebody to hang out with or lean on or kind of make out with or whatever, when I'm in drag and like, you know, getting my best life and my fantasy together, I want them to be part of the illusion with me. Mm -hmm. I want them to be this like beautiful, strong, an amazing man standing next to me when I'm in drag at the gig. Mm -hmm. I don't need them to carry my bags. I don't need them to be my support system. I just need them to literally care about me at the gig as well. And so when I was dating and people were like, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like bars. I don't like, cause it's, it's so much, it's bars, it's crowds. It's, yeah. uh, it can, it can be drugs and like a, a bunch of other things. And that was really challenging for some of the people I was dating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely presents its own slew of challenges when it comes to relationships. And honestly, moving forward, I don't know, you know, I think it's just the best policy, to be honest. And if, if people don't like it, then they can see themselves out. I, I think I'm learning more as I grow up that um, if people make me feel insecure mm -hmm. in any type of dating situation, that it's not a situation that's worth my time. And I mean, mm. they're not putting the same level of investment into it that I am. Because I used to worry myself sick over fucking guys that would put minimal effort into the situation. Oh, T. And I was there with her through <laughs> so many of those. Yeah. Most of me and Donna's true fights in our friendship have usually been around a guy she was seeing who was treating her like garbage. But Donna's yeah. one of those people who gives a lot of herself to the people she dates. Yeah. Which isn't inherently a bad thing if yeah. the person doesn't suck yeah <laughs> if the person sucks then it's just like ah! and a lot of them did <laughs> so... a lot of them really did suck and not that mm -hmm. good yeah actually you know <laughs> you know what we're going to expose this to um so the the guy who broke up with you on your birthday yeah um i was talking to them two days ago about not that specific situation but I, they were like he asked, he's like, well, how does Donna feel about me these days? Because obviously this is years ago at this point. Yeah. And I said, well, when she talks about you, she talks about you as the guy who broke up with her on her birthday. Yeah. And he said, wow. He's like, wow, I feel really ashamed of myself. And I was like, well, you should because you were garbage. Yeah. I was like, that you did that to a person. And he's like, wow, I really wish I could apologize or say something. I was like, it doesn't probably mean anything now. I was like, but the fact is, like, it's that did happen and that became part of her story and you are the bad guy in that instance yeah and it did happen it did and like it's it's so the on my birthday in a different city <laughs> so there was a whole car ride quiet very quiet car ride full of people 
on the way back too. It was awkward as fuck. Yeah, and so my thing with the reason I'm bringing that subject up too for our listeners who might want to date drag artists because you're listening to a drag queen podcast, like just remember that those stories will stick with them forever. Um, or at least for a long time. Don't be that story for somebody. Like, really take stock. And I know dating nowadays, like, ghosting is such a big thing. Mm-hmm. But try try not to do that to a person. Like, I know it's difficult to have negative conversations, but have the negative conversation. I have more disdain for the guy that broke up with me mid-show, though. Oh, yeah, I don't like much that more. one. Oh, that, so much. That was ter- And then the, like unwillingness to accept fault at the end of it was also <laughs> like like that really fucked me up that you did that to me that you just left in the middle and then over the phone broke up with me in the middle of a show <laughs> i know that's so ridiculous like, do you know how insecure i felt for the rest of the night <laughs> like, yeah, that's so messed up and i did not but, like that one <laughs> yeah, I yeah. did it. Anyway, this was just a whole commercial for my dating life. I'm actually doing a reality series. Um, <laughs> it's going to be called A Shot at Love with Donatella My Secrets. We replaced Tila Tequila because she's very homophobic nowadays. But anyway, <laughs> um, I will be presenting um, as the one and only bachelor slash bachelorette of this show. And if anyone wants to win me over, that would be great. Um, I am only a little bit trash. Yeah, and it's sponsored by... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, my gosh. I, I, you know, and the funny thing is, and I know that we were talking a lot about Donna's relationship past and whatever, because she has a lot more cool stories than I do. But um, th- the thing is, too, when you're, when you're thinking about these relationships and that with your family, um, yeah. and especially for me, it was with friends. Drag artists everywhere, if, you, or if you're listening to this, do not expect your friends to be your support when it comes to every aspect of your drag. You know, say you throw a new show and you'll invite all your friends. They'll come to the first one. They definitely won't come to the second one. Yeah. And then that puts you into a depressive funk. I see on Facebook all the time about drag artists being like, wow, I really see who my friends are now. And my friends are this and blah, 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 blah. Like, I, I know I'm lucky. I have yeah. a wonderful man who is so kind and beautiful and great. And I have a best friend in Donna who's supportive of almost every decision I make mm-hmm. and challenges me to be better and things like that. And like, and even I have Autumn, who is a new friend in my life, who's just so caring and kind to me. And so if my friendships are wishy-washy or somebody cancels on me or they don't come to my shows or they don't tip me down or they don't buy tickets to my online show, I do not... Like, I'm in where Donna is now in her relationships. I, I don't mm-hmm. feel any type of way Mm-mm. when my friends are like oh yeah i said i was gonna go but like and then i didn't i'm like okay it's not disappointing anymore it, you know? not even a little and and the thing is the thing is i mean this is gonna sound very very shitty <laughs> but with drag it is an extremely extremely social activity and it's a revolving door of fleeting and sometimes lasting and meaningful relationships sometimes. when it comes to friendships Right. So if you're not going to come and support, I I eventually will meet people who do. And yeah. and they'll be around for, for some time, too. Because it's just how it goes. It's an extremely social activity, so you're constantly meeting people. Yeah, you are. It's a, it is a revolving door of people. Like, our last... Our sing-alongs have been so amazingly chill Mm -hmm. with people who support us and love us and just come out. We get to hang out with them and chat and talk and whatever. And, like, it's it's been, like, the last one was so good for that. Like, Mm -hmm. it just was. And actually, the one before that was also just good Um, because of that social aspect and that kindness and that caring and that... Because people don't recognize that drag artists are still people. Yeah. Like, we are. And, like, we have... We want to have positive relationships that fill us up the 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 last topic of this podcast is actually talking about how drag can be healthy for your mental wellness Mm -hmm. as well like so like i was talking about with the sing-along like being in drag and meeting these people even though i wasn't feeling as great because i had that was like day three of the gout attack or whatever uh, when it was kind of like on a pain high uh people were so nice and they were super kind and people were being sweet to me and that's just that's great. That's great for my mental wellness. It really yeah. is. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that when I'm really needing to, like, scratch a creative itch and I'm feeling a bit down and depressed, like, honestly, a, a good way to express myself is by trying something unique and creative with makeup and just, like, testing it out. Mm-hmm. And and if there's a look that I kind of have, like, a little bit of inspiration 
to do, you know, like even if it's like a color or a, um, a topic or something like that that inspires me. It's always fun to create something new and unique and that's the thing with makeup is that it only lasts for that moment in time and whatever photos you take of it. Yeah. But that's how it's that, that's how the art lasts is just by that moment and that's how performances are for drag too, mm -hmm. you know? So expressing yourself in those ways can be so so therapeutic and cathartic. It really yeah. can. Yeah, it really can. And even on my even on my side of it, drag can sometimes be an escape even just from the fact of it is the Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus scenario, like the best of both worlds. Worlds. Yeah, because yeah. I can become a different person. Like I was even saying, like I was like, Coco doesn't really have gout. Like yeah. she, she doesn't. Like Coco she powers like, through it. She powers <laughs> through it. She gets to perform. She gets to sing live. She's an, she's a star. She's an yeah. entertainer. Like, and I get to be in that mode and forget about all my boy world troubles. And I I love that for mm -hmm. aspects. And then also when I was doing drag five nights a week. It was cool to escape into my out of drag mode, into my boy mode, to relax and hang out with my husband and like mm -hmm. get my best life. Like so it can be positive so much so if you let it be. And I know that there are like and I do wanna have a side note out there, I've been reading about how there's so many drag race contestants who got so bullied that they don't even have social media or they mm -hmm. quit drag. Um, and they'll get so defeated too. They'll be like, okay, you win. I don't want to do drag anymore. Yeah. Like I've lost my passion. You guys have beat it out of me. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. And like, and it's true. Like I, I've been at the negative end of a drag drama thing and it's not cute. No, it's not. It's not. It's very damaging. Yes, it it's is. It's very damaging. I mean, and that's, that's even going back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the episode with like the the harsh critiques that you can get yeah, from people. Yeah, true. It can be, it can be very just like not great on your psyche. Um, but if you are able to do it to where you're able to express yourself in a controlled environment, and I feel honestly, probably with how these digital shows have been going, you, I feel more creative and I feel like I've been able to express myself even more because I can tell a different narrative that doesn't have to take place live and on stage. So yeah. it's something that I can tell a bit of a different story and it, it's a story that's done throughout the way that you, sh you film something or the way that the shot is or, you know, and um, I, I think that that's kind of been a benefit to the yeah. way that shows have been lately. Yeah, it definitely has. And yeah. Donna's introvert performance, I just watched it today, the rough cut. Um, or actually, it was probably the final cut. It was no, actually. I th I'm going to tweak it a bit. <laughs> it, was, it was actually super good and it was incredibly artistic. And I just don't have those skills. Not even a little. Um, Autumn Rain's Heart usually does all my video editing because I just. I can film the thing, but I'm not a good actor, per se. I'm a great performer, but not a great actor. And so a lot of online shows is about acting, mm -hmm. per se. And like, I don't know. Like, I, I definitely applaud Donna, so you should definitely tune in to Introvert on Saturday. Yes, please do. And it all depends on what medium you like to do. You are a great live host. You love in that type of interaction with oh, the audience. Oh, I do. I, I sometimes have an awkwardness when it comes to, like, trying to host live. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, people either kind of like me or they're like, oh, well, she looks really pretty and she's a fun time to party with. <laughs> she, she looks really pretty and she's a fun time to party with. <laughs> she's a bombshell. <laughs> well, and you know, because we do this podcast in full drag. So. Yes, yeah, exactly. I'm I mean, completely done up. Seriously, I have Marge Simpson hair right now. It's yeah, so I'm actually dressed as Elvira right now. It's, I got the full, like, bouffant black do on, and my tits mm -hmm. are huge. Yeah, and I have, like, Plunging this orange line. smoky eye, but, like, I didn't do eyebrows. It's like a thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. Yeah, that brings us to the end of our episode. I think it does. Yeah, that was a nice episode. Um, take care of yourselves. Therapy is important. And therapy through doing something you love is also extremely important. So um, make sure you're looking out for yourself. There's plenty of resources out there when it comes to uh, talking to someone. Uh, there's even virtual uh, resources that have, uh, like apps that have been developed. Uh, we're not sponsored yeah. by them, so we're not going to name them. But uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. There's apps like BetterHelp. I, I don't really know how, how great they um, are as far as like getting help goes. But if you need someone to talk to, there are definitely resources out there. Um, I luckily live in Oregon and have really great mental health services. Um, and uh, 
there's always someone to talk to um, yeah. at a sliding scale even. Just know that like help is always out there. Yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, that brings us to the end of this episode. So thank you guys so much for listening to us talk about and ramble about our emotional woes and our emotional upswings. And this, our well-being. And our well-being. And, like, I'm just really one with nature right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, make sure you checking us out at com. Make sure to like and subscribe. Please rate us on Apple Podcasts because you know that means a lot to us. Yes. Um, thank you to all of our new listeners that we do have here. Sorry for anybody who offended who does listen to this podcast when we're talking mad shit about you. Just joking. That's <laughs> But thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> this has been another episode of HM of a Secret Podcast. The hosts of HM of a Secret Podcast are Donatella My Secrets and Coco Jim Holiday. You may follow Donatella My Secrets at Donatella underscore My Secrets on Instagram. You may follow Coco Jim Holiday at Coco Jim Holiday on Instagram. Original music by Touche Douche and Party Favors. You can follow them respectively at the Touche Douche and at Party Favors Music on Instagram. For more exclusive content, visit www.ajemofasecretpodcast.com. That is a j e m of a secret podcast.com. Be sure to tune in every week on Thursday for a new episode wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have any comments or questions, email us at a gem of a secret pod at gmail.com. Please don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.